Probably the most fascinating feature of the Sony A7R5 on the exterior would be the 4-axis multi-angle LCD screen. But it gets even more interesting on the inside when we take a look at Sony's AI processing unit, which helps the camera recognize human poses when you're shooting portraits. Let's jump straight into the review. Hey, how's it going guys? Ryan back here with another Sony review and today we are taking a look at Sony's new A7R5 which is the stills photo focus camera and in terms of megapixel readout you are getting 61 megapixels which is a lot and I've had this camera for about close to three weeks now and we well Sony actually organized an event to for the media to test the camera out and they actually set up like a lot of interesting stations where you could test the autofocus functionalities as well as all the other uh, interesting functionalities which we'll cover later on in the video but speaking of being only focused on a stills uh, aspect of photography it can also do some interesting uh, video functionalities and this camera can shoot in 8k 25 frames which is not something that you would expect out of a stills focused camera it can also do 4k 50 which i would say is the bare minimum for a lot of videographers when they're looking at a camera to do video nowadays but I would say comparatively from the A7R5 to the R4, not a lot of um, different upgrades in terms of optical standpoint, but a lot of the differences would stand within the autofocus aspect of this camera. So 61 megapixels similar to the A7R4, as well as 10 frames per second in terms of the maximum burst rate that you can get. But my first impressions of this camera when I picked it up was definitely the weight. It weighs 723 grams with the battery as well as the SD card. But it's not meaning to say that it's the heaviest mirrorless camera out there, but it definitely did feel heavier to me. And I think most of it is also attributed to the 4-axis multi LCD screen, which we'll take a look a little bit more in the design aspect of this camera. Alright, so in terms of the design, it is not drastically different from all of the other Sony Alpha cameras. So you have your buttons, you have a 35mm CMOS full-frame sensor with 61 megapixels, as I mentioned before. In terms of the buttons layout, it's pretty much the same as the A7R4, but the only thing that really is different is probably the 4-axis multi-angle LCD screen, which I want to emphasize a little bit more in the design aspect of this camera. So previously, you would only, from the other Sony Alpha cameras, you would get an LCD screen, which you know, it can flip out, it can like tilt, it can change all the angles that you need. But in this camera, Sony has added that extra functionality where you can even push the monitor out like so. And this enables more flexibility when you're shooting, you know, low to the ground or even high up. And I feel like personally, this would add a lot of functionality when I'm shooting out and about or doing run and gun. Reason being, when you're flipping your screen this way, or at least for me, I feel like it takes up a lot of space. So sometimes it gets in your way. So having the functionality of having a screen that just tilts out like this and keeping that small form factor would definitely help a lot of photographers or videographers out there, I believe so. But yes, so you have your basic like, you know, SD card slots. This is dual SD card slot as well as dual CFAST Express Type A. And your battery is also the same. Sony hasn't changed the battery. So you can use, it is pretty much the same NPFZ100 from all the other Sony Alpha cameras out there. You have full-size HDMI on the other side as well as your headphone and mic jack. So in terms of design, I wouldn't say it's anything really outstanding or like different except apart from the LCD screen. It is more or less the same as the A7R4. But I do have to say, I noticed that the grip for some reason, I'm not sure if Sony has redesigned the grip, but when I held it in hand, it felt a little bit beefier. And personally, I really like it because my hands are, I guess, like relatively bigger than average. So when I'm using like smaller DSLR or smaller mirrorless cameras back in the day um, with, with Sony cameras, it did feel a little bit weird for me. But now that the grip is a little bit chunkier, it feels a lot nicer in my hand. All right, so in terms of this being a stills focused camera, and apart from having a beefy grip, this camera is dust and moisture resistant, so it's perfect for outdoor photography or if you want to do wildlife photography. And apart from that, Sony has claimed that this has a better effective heat dissipation system within the body. Because as we know, some of the other previous Sony camera models have had overheating issues because of such a small form factor in the body, as well as the high capability to shoot like higher frame rates for video. And this being a camera that can shoot 8K25 or even at 4K50, I have not tested 
tested the video functionalities as in-depth as I would like to be since this is a stills focused camera. So for this review, we would dive more into how this camera performs from a stills photography standpoint. But fret not, if you're intending to use this for video, I have seen other reviews out there where people have tested this video under stressful environments and like shooting for long hours and apparently it doesn't overheat or not that I know of, so that's safe to know. But the camera gets even more interesting when it comes to the functionality, so let's jump straight into that. My biggest takeaway out of the Sony A7R5 has to be the auto-focusing capability. So that is all thanks to the AI processing unit which has been upgraded and Sony claims that the human eye recognition is improved by 60% as well as 40% in terms of animal um, AF recognition. So what does the AI processing unit actually do and how does it help in terms of the auto-focusing? So Sony claims that this AI processing unit has the capability to even predict or it, it understands human poses and it has an estimation to uh, tell the camera how the human poses or whatever priority that you set it to, which I will go more in depth later because there is quite a few. But just overall, using the camera, having, having tested the AI processing unit, I can, it's safe to say that because of the AI processing unit, the, the autofocusing is a lot stickier and it tends to stick on the subject a lot more accurately. Even though nowadays, in Singapore at least, we don't have to wear masks anymore, but when your subject is wearing a mask, it can still focus very well because I guess like previously, pre-COVID when cameras were produced, you know, there was no need for a uh, camera brands to like really put this functionality into it and having the need to wear masks during that period caused a lot of uh, difficulties for cameras to focus on the subject's face or the head. But now this camera can do that and it can also even focus on subjects that were backlit or that are backlit. So another interesting feature of the AI processing unit that I really wanted to test on is to, um, to see if the camera can focus really well even, there, even though there are like heavy foreground elements. So I guess like for people that love to do like dreamy shots and stuff like that, or if you're a wedding photographer or videographer, sometimes you would incorporate like heavy bokeh in the foreground just to make it a little bit more moody. So during the testing phase of the camera, I wanted to see how sticky the auto-focusing was. But you do have to note that you have to set the priorities to, uh, the auto-focusing priority to human or eye auto-focus. Speaking of auto-focusing priorities, this camera has a ton. Sony has taken a step further from uh, just having like animal or like just human eye autofocus. Now you can even shoot insects. So for all of you guys, wildlife photographers out there or insect photographers, you can use this camera to focus on insects and really small ones. Whether it is effective or not, I will focus on it more during the testing phase of this video. But apart from that, you have but did I already mention that? But you have bird autofocusing, eye autofocusing on the birds, you have trains, you have planes, yes, airplanes, and you even have like cars. So to be very honest, it is quite a um, well-rounded camera in terms of autofocusing capability. So I would say this camera is really great if you're doing pretty much anything at this point. But obviously, I would love to see how Sony can take this step further in the future. But Let's go back into focusing on the functionalities of this camera. Another interesting thing is that this camera can uh, do up to 8-stop internal IBIS. So previously, you would normally have to use like a lens which was IS uh, compatible to in order to get the 8-stop. But now, even without IS lenses, you can get up to 8-stop of image stabilization on this camera itself. And in terms of continuous shooting, you can shoot over a thousand JPEG simultaneously without having the camera to stop. But of course, that being said, you need to at least have a fast enough cut to do that. But really, really interesting because the last thing you want is to be slowed down by the writing speeds of the camera as well as the reading speed of the cut. But as I mentioned before, 8K 25 frames, 4K 50. And one more thing, when you're shooting on 4K 50, you do have to take note that this camera would have a 1.2 times crop. So you're not exactly getting the full frame um, image readout, but you're getting a 1.2 times crop when you're shooting on 4K 50. Other than the 4K capabilities of this camera, you can expect 100 frames per second, but only when you're shooting 1080p. But the camera does shoot up to 10 bit 4 to 2 and at 600 Mbps or up to 600 Mbps, which is quite a lot. In terms of the dynamic range, you will get 14 stops of latitude when you're shooting log. And I guess like, you know, overall, it is not the most impressive video specs out of this camera, but we have to remember that this is after all a stills focused camera. 
All right, so let's focus on the real-world test as well as the actual performance of this camera. So as I've mentioned before, the camera is uh, very heavily advanced in terms of the auto-focusing, all due to the AI processing unit. So let's jump straight in to take a look at some of the photos that I've shot. A couple of weeks, Sony hosted a media event at the Singapore Polo Club, where we got to shoot some insects, some models, and even horses just to test the, all of the auto-focusing capabilities out of the A7R5. So let's focus on the first station that I was at. So we were shooting some caterpillars and ants, and just keep in mind that since this is a new camera, all of the images that you're seeing are all in JPEG, and the reason for that is also because the raw files are still too new for Lightroom to uh, process it, so I wasn't really able to test the raw file capabilities, but knowing Sony, I'm sure the raw files are really nice and really easy to edit. But yes, in terms of the auto-focusing for the caterpillars and ants, overall, the auto-focusing was really accurate, and this is actually my first time having to shoot a camera that has a insect AF priority, and shooting the caterpillars wasn't exactly too tough, but one thing that I have to say is that it's interesting to know that the camera could um, know where the caterpillars are, even with the caterpillars on the leaves, because you know the caterpillars are green and the leaf was also green. But when I was shooting, the there was an auto focusing box that would just um, you know surround the caterpillar, and it let me know that the camera did actually recognize that it was a caterpillar that I was shooting. And I didn't really have any problems shooting caterpillars, but I wanted to try something more interesting. So there was another booth where we were shooting some ants, and these ants were were pretty huge, but in terms of like the size compared to the enclosure, it was obviously very small and there was a lot of foliage within the box itself. Right off the bat, when I was shooting it, the stationary ants were easy to focus on. The camera did recognize that I was shooting an ant, and as I mentioned, the auto-focusing box showed up around the ants as well as the caterpillars. But what I really wanted to push this camera towards or to find out more was how did it do in terms of the tracking for auto-focusing on ants. So obviously, since the ants were really small, there were multiple times that the auto-focusing missed, but there were also times where the shots were in focus. So it is still quite undecided as to whether I would say it was accurate or not. But looking at overall at all the images, I would say that if you're shooting anything as big as a caterpillar, that would definitely work. But if you're shooting something as small as ants with uh, a lot of foliage or like rocks around, it would definitely pose slightly more difficulty towards for the camera. You know, if you're, if you're interested in shooting like insects that are not really moving that much, I'm definitely 100% sure that the camera is more than capable of doing that. Let's take a look at how the camera performs when we're shooting models. And as I mentioned before, I really wanted to test to see if the camera could focus on like the model's eyes even when they are facing their backs and when they're backlit and stuff like that. Like all the things that Sony has mentioned this camera was capable to do. And you know, obviously shooting the model straight on without like any interference and stuff like that, the camera was really sticky in terms of the tracking. It was very sharp. It managed to focus on the eyes when the eyes were visible. But I think what I really wanted to push this camera was for how the AI processing unit has helped in terms of the stickiness of the autofocusing. So there was this one instance where I had this model just walk up and down and there was a lot of like, you know, fake plants around. The interesting thing is that when the model was just walking, the camera would recognize, okay, this is the head. So it will focus on the head itself. But when the model crossed be behind like one of these uh, props that were on the set, the camera automatically recognized that her face was in shot and moved the focus to her body instead. And all throughout when she was walking, the focus was absolutely sharp and it was tracking her throughout. And immediately when she came apart out of the, you know, the prop, the camera would recognize that the head is in frame again and start to focus on that. So that was one interesting thing that I realized about this because when you're shooting on previous model cameras, I noticed that whenever the model is like behind something or just walking by, the camera would not recognize where the model was and sometimes it would just lose the focus entirely. But the A7R5 is perfect at doing that. So what about the models, um, you know, behind like heavy foreground. So I did shoot at one of these stations where it was a wedding setup. So there was a couple, they were, you know, walking up and down and I wanted to see if Cameron was able to focus on them even though it was past like some plants and even though it was past some fairy lights. So I tried to the extent as uh, the fairy lights were covered entirely from the model's face, but 
the camera still managed to pick up and understood that this is where the model space was and not to focus on the fairy lights instead. This is one of the functions that I feel is really really handy because when I'm shooting video or even photos and having to rely on the autofocus heavily, sometimes when you're shooting within heavy foreground, the camera will just focus whatever that's closest to the camera and sometimes that's not exactly what you want to shoot and therefore I would have to rely on manual focusing but when you're shooting on a gimbal that is ex not exactly the easiest thing to do so having a camera that can do that is definitely a plus for me now that we know that the auto focusing for humans are really accurate what about if there are like you know two or even three people in the frame and would the camera actually be able to focus on the subject that you want it to and this is what I found testing the camera shooting with just two models. The camera would recognize which is your key subject if you focus on that. You can even select it into, in the camera. So once you've selected, for example, like in this case where I was testing it, I wanted to focus on the female model. I just had to select on her face or you can tap on the screen and the camera would lock onto her. But if you were to midway want to shoot, maybe shoot the male, male model instead, how, could you, how would it be possible to do that? Sony has actually made it super easy. All you have to do is just click with the button and there would actually have a yellow line or orange line below the focus box and you can use the knob to just toggle in between the different human subjects within the frame and just select it again and the camera will recognize that oh okay the, you want to switch the focus or the key subject from this person to the next and the camera would lock onto the subject instead so why would this save a lot of time I guess back in the day, if this wasn't a feature, you would you know, have to go into the auto-focusing menu and then select like the different uh, boxes and stuff like that. Half press it and the camera would just recognize, okay, you want to switch to that. That is also possible, but it takes a lot more time. When you're doing like wedding photography or run and gun stuff, you want to switch it on the flow. And I guess like this is a lot simpler and a lot quicker as well since the camera recognizes that there are more than one person within the frame and you can just hop on from one person to the next in terms of the key subject when you're focusing from uh, person to person. All right, so lastly, we got to test the animal autofocus when uh, we were shooting some horses at the polo club. I guess you guys would already know by now, the auto-focusing on this camera is insanely sticky and insanely accurate. And uh, it focused well on the horses when they were just jumping and moving around. And one interesting thing to note is that even when the horses were really small in frame, the camera would still be able to recognize that this is a horse. And we were shooting on quite a bright day outside. So the background was overexposed. So uh, we had to, you know, I would say that in this instance, the subject was backlit, but the camera didn't have any issues with that at all. And when I switched over to the human AF priority, the camera would instantly instantly know that, okay, you know, let's not focus on the horse right now, let's focus on the rider instead. Even though both of the subjects were on the same plane, it was just interesting to know that the camera actually recognized what a human was as well as what a horse was. But um, apart from all the testing, I would say like this camera is a beast when it comes to autofocusing. So if you're doing run and gun, this is a camera that you should look out for. But let's hop over to testing more in terms of other environments. Sony has claimed that this camera is excellent, has excellent autofocus capabilities even in low light conditions. So I took this camera out to the Art Science Museum and I got to shoot my girlfriend in, the, in a very, very extremely dark environment. So if you've ever been to the Singapore Art Science Museum, you know that the area is super dark and it's not exactly the easiest to shoot uh, videos or photos within the area itself. But Interestingly, when I was shooting, obviously I was using a high ISO, but even when I pushed down the um, exposure up to negative 4, it didn't have as much issues as I thought it would. Even when I'm shooting my girlfriend against a LED wall and she was obviously backlit or even in like one of the rooms she was obviously backlit, the camera knew where to focus on and that was to me very impressive. In terms of the noise, you know, since this, these were JPEG, I couldn't actually tell if the noise was uh, too much or not but just looking off the images I was shooting I believe at about 10,000 ISO for some of the images obviously there's going to be a bit of noise but to be honest in my opinion I felt like it was still usable if you want to use it for you know social media and stuff like that but I would say yeah throughout this whole testing process I didn't really have any issues with the autofocusing but obviously there, there is always some times where you have a hit or miss 
in terms of the percentage of the accuracy, I would safely say this camera can do up to 80% um, in terms of the focus accuracy when you're shooting in all sorts of conditions, all sorts of uh, AF priority. And one funny thing that I don't have a photo of, I was testing the airplane priority in this in the Art Science Museum. So they had this like booth where you could like draw stuff and scan it and then an airplane would come out. The camera actually managed to recognize that that was an airplane even though it was a LED projection on a screen. Um, but yeah, that, that was just fun to test out. Alright, so it is safe to say that Sony has yet produced another very compelling camera and I'm sure a lot of photographers out there would have a headache of what camera to upgrade next. Even for myself, I'm currently still shooting on, in terms of my stills camera, I'm still using my Canon 5D Mark IV all the way back from 2016. So I think it's due time to upgrade to a camera. And even for myself, I'm seriously considering jumping to Sony and even upgrading to the A7R5. So as I mentioned before, excellent stills camera, 61 megapixels. And for myself as a hybrid shooter, the only thing that's holding me back is the, um, you know, the capabilities of not being able to shoot like 4K 100 frames as compared to the Sony A7S III or the FX3 which you are, which I am shooting on right now. But since this is a stills focus camera, I'm not exactly expecting that even though it can shoot 8K25 and 4K50, which is quite impressive already. So that being said, how much are we looking at for the Sony A7R5? So this price is from the Sony website in Singapore. Just take note, the price is in Singapore dollars. You are paying $5,749. So I would say it's quite a competitive price for a camera of this caliber with all the other competitor brands. Um, because of the video functionalities as well as the excellent auto-focusing capabilities of this phone, of this camera, sorry. And even though I was just shooting on JPEG, I was really impressed with uh, the optical resolution and everything was really sharp. I even got to test this camera for a product shoot and it saved me a lot of trouble because as shooting on my Canon 5D Mark IV, so that is a 30 megapixel camera, this is more than double of that. When I was masking the subjects, it was just super easy because the resolution is so, so high. Everything was so crispy even as I was like zooming in up to 300%. So apart from it being a excellent stills camera, I think, you know, you guys would know now that I really don't have much to say or I didn't really have any issues when I was using this camera and I am actually really excited to see what Sony will come up in the future. Alright, so we have come to the end of yet another review and I just want to point out that Sony is not sponsoring me. I'm not being paid by them to say good things about this camera but in all honesty, it was really quite difficult to find anything wrong with this camera. In terms of photos, it was excellent. Megapixel readout, super high for photographers that want to do billboards and stuff like that. It opens up so much more for like every other category in terms of photography. You want to do cars, you want to do animals, you want to do insects, you want to shoot planes. Perfect. And I'm honestly quite excited to see what Sony has in store for us, even in terms of their extensive um, lenses already produced, and obviously all the other amazing cameras that they have in store for us. But as always, I hope you guys enjoyed this Ryan Mamba's perspective, and I'll see you guys in the next one.